sais que je rêve de toi nuit du soir. I'm heading back in time again with another vintage-inspired lingerie project. I'm bringing back out this Dolores of St. Paul pattern. We've made this beautiful little robe in the past. I'll put up um, a picture of that for you, or the link to the video so you can actually make it yourself. And we're going to come back and use the gown portion, shorten it, and make a baby doll. So we're going to use the same pattern. I'm going to take just a regular shorts pattern like this to make the bloomers and this is the fabric it is a cotton and spandex knit super stretchy and soft and flowy this is not a sleepwear fabric they do make sleepwear fabrics specifically for children that are non-flammable like a t-shirt weight knit super soft and flowy and drapey it'll make a very pretty and usable um, nightgown so that's what I'm going to use and um, I'm going to put this lace, this is going to be around the neckline of the collar, and then this can actually be cut down the middle, and I may do that and hem, um, hem the bottom of this and may even put a little bit on the shorts, we'll see. I have this big hank of it, and then I have another smaller hank. I have two pieces of this, so we'll see. I may end up using a lot of it because the hem around this is quite full. The only thing I'm going to do differently than is on here is this is about a knee length gown. I'm going to shorten it to make it baby doll length, which is really about rear end length. So it's really like a top. A baby doll is usually as short as a shirt, and then you can kind of see the little shorts and bloomers underneath. So that's what we're going to do. I'm so inspired. I'm going to put a few pictures up um, of some of the uh, inspiration pieces that I had for this. I'm not doing, traditionally it's a couple layers and one of the layers is a very sheer and floaty netting or something. And I think we will come back and revisit this in the springtime after I have some more time to source fabrics and do more traditional um, look of, of the 1950s into the 60s look of that um, little shorty baby doll. I think that's so cute. And I would really like to make a matching robe again out of this. I just love this pattern. I am outsourcing patterns, so we may have some other vintage ones coming up or vintage look, uh, depending on what I can source. I may have to do some drafting. Um, so we're going to go cut this out. It's very straightforward for cutting out. I'm just shortening my pattern. I, the pattern calls for bias binding in the armhole, which I probably won't do because it's a knit. I'll probably just serge that armhole and turn it under and stitch it. You could bias bind it. It does make it much more stable. I haven't decided yet, but I am going to do some, add some lace and things. So quick, cute, little shorty jammy set. All cut out. I had to do a little searching. I pulled out my pattern to cut out my shorts and realized the shorts weren't in there, but I have that pattern in two sizes, so I went back to the other size and found that they had just gotten filed in the wrong envelope, thankfully. And I had literally exactly enough to cut out the, pen, the baby doll and the little shorts to make bloomers out of. I did not have even an inch extra. It was exactly perfect. I'm Fortunate, I didn't really measure first when I shortened my gown. I shortened it just right. I probably could have gone a little shorter and made it a little less um, stressful on myself, but it worked out, so I'm happy. Um, the very first thing, once we're cut, is we're going to do a gathering line on the front and back across the top of the um, gown. So I've got a little gathering line. Now this has narrow seam allowance on it, so there's not it's not 5 eighths. I think it's 3 eighths is what they include. I haven't looked it up, but I remember it was narrow. So we're going to do both gathering lines. The other thing we're going to do is apply the lace to the yoke pieces. Um, I, it's best if you have an all over lace or a wide lace because the yoke is very curved. So here it is. It's, see how curved it is? And my lace is sort of narrow and straight. You know what, I'm gonna show this to you top down. Let's switch over to top down and I'll show you what it looks like. So here is a little facing piece and you can see how curvy it is. And this, let me flip it over. So if I'm trying to get this to match up, what ends up happening is that I could get it to match on the outer edge, I'm going to have to gather this edge, which is fine. Like you would just have, you just have to be aware that you're gonna have some little gathers up against your neckline. The other option is we line up like this, and then we come back with some little scrappy pieces, and we match it up here, like that. So there'd be this little overlap where I match it up, and then 
I'm making sew it, and I think this is what I'm going to do. It just uses less lace, and it makes this lace smooth, and I think I'm just gonna prefer that. So I'm going to do some quick little piecing here on my yokes, and this only for the outer piece. Um, so I'm gonna do that for the front and the back. Stitch this down at the shoulders and make this work. So I'm gonna have completed yokes, and I'm gonna do my basting stitches, and then we're gonna come back and start assembling. So here's my little seam. Here it is from the back. So you can see I went and left the ivory on this side and I used the burgundy-ish on the front side and I just did a little zigzag to join the two. So this is how it looks right now. And then I'll flip it to the back like this so I can see the outline and I'll just trim it off. This one's done and trimmed. So you can see how it looks. You can see it was close to fitting, but it just had a little bit in that corner and it's really not noticeable. This is the back neck uh, piece. You can see it's pretty small, not real noticeable, and that's how it looks covered. What we should have started with was our side seam um, before we even gathered the neckline. After the side seam, we finish off the armhole. If you want, if you're sitting at an overlock like I am, you can just serge that armhole, turn it under your quarter to three eighths of an inch, and top stitch it. Or you can use a bias binding and bias bind that armhole, sew it on one edge, flip it to the back and stitch it down so that the armhole's finished. Then we will gather our neckline. So I have already had you do this a little bit out of order um, because I gathered first. So I'm actually gonna unpick at the corners a little bit so that I can serge around that. We're gonna do that and you can go ahead and prep your yolks like I did, add your lace to them and get those done and sew your yokes together the shoulder seam. So you're gonna sew lace yoke to lace yoke front and back at the little neckline shoulder seams here. And then the ones without the lace, the same thing at the shoulder seam because this is a lined yoke, it's self-lined. So it'll be very pretty when we're done. So all those things are gonna happen. I'll be back in a few minutes. Quick close up. Here's my side seam that I sewed first, then I came back and just searched this edge, and then we're going to just top stitch this down, and I, when I top stitch it, I will stitch it from this side. Then, here's my gathering stitch. We're gonna use these little gathering stitches to start gathering it up onto our facings. Here's my facing sewn together at the shoulder, and there's little markings so you know where to start because it's open over the shoulder. We're gonna put a pin or pin, pin in our little arm's eye um, at those markings and then the center front and then we just gather between so we have nice little gathers. And this is our little yoke and the, our garments. So we're gonna do both of those front and back and then we're just gonna stitch this in and then we're gonna come back and self-enclose that yoke with the other side. The other thing I've done, because we it's already put together, the side seams are done and the shoulders done, is I went ahead and I just searched the hem. And because I'm working with a knit, and um, if you're working with tulle or anything, you could do a lettuce hem, which is setting your serger for a rolled hem, and then you pull the hem as you sew, and it gives you a lettuce effect. I'm going to put um, lace on the bottom of mine. You could also leave it just like this and just turn it up and stitch it like we did our little armholes, like we did our little armholes, like this. So, I'm gonna sew this in, and I'll show you the next step on the yoke. Look at how cute this is. Okay, so this is our little gown. It's all gathered on and stitched. This is the inside. And I'm going to now take my other piece, and if you wanna sew on your tag, now's the time to do it. Go ahead and put your tag on before you put it together. And we're going to match these up and just sew around the neckline. Make sure you get front to front and back to back. And it's pretty easy to tell because the front is longer than the back. The back is a shorter yoke piece than the front, and the front kind of dips down a little lower because that's how our necks are made. See how our neck dips down lower and is higher in the back? That's how collars are set up. So we're just gonna match this up at the neckline like this and just stitch around that neckline. It's just a circle all the way around. And then we're gonna come back and we're going to fix the bottom half. So we're gonna fold in that edge and wh either whip stitch it or top stitch it. It's your choice how you wanna do it. I will probably whip stitch it because I don't want top stitching on my lace. So I'm gonna whip stitch it from behind and then we'll start doing the lace on the bottom. So let me get this on and I'll show you a little whip stitching and then we'll do lace. Neckline sewn in. So here's the facing of the yoke. You can see it flips around to the inside like this. Here's the inside. So 
It's going to flip around. It's going to cover the old stitching. We're going to fold this up, flip this down, whip them together. At the sides here, which is over the shoulder, it's raw right now, so we're going to marry those to each other. Uh, whip stitch it shut or to um, pin it and top stitch it. So we're going to do that little thing here by hand. I'm going to do that by hand. So this is how it's going to flip to the inside. And that's done. So let me show you lace next. A lot of times when I have a wide lace like this, I just cut between the motifs to make two separate laces because they're usually mirror imaged and just slightly offset. And I use that for the hemming. On this particular one, I'm gonna show you because I've done a little bit. You can see, and this is my lace edge, and you can see how dramatic and lumpy it is. And it's also all slanted in one direction, which is fine. Like this could be very pretty and I considered using it. However, I think I don't, I just don't love it as much as if I just cut the lace exactly down the middle and applied it to the hem at the bottom. So I probably could have waited to do the serging because I think I'm just going to do it again. I'm gonna just serge this to this and just have it fold over and have a hem that's half that around the bottom. I think that's what I would rather have. You could even gather, do a gathered um, lace around it, but I think I'm just gonna cut it in half and stitch it on. And then we're gonna start shorts. Close up of me applying the lace. I am searching off my old stitching because I just didn't think it through. So you can see I cut off a tiny bit right here, just a quarter of an inch so that I can reattach it without having the two layers there. So this is the wrong side and then it'll flip back and look like that along the hem. So this is how the inside looks pinned. Here's the outside so that I can just stitch, whoops, stitch it around. There's my, um, my tag. And we're just gonna stitch all the way around with a quick whip stitch. I've already got the lace on. Looks like that. This is the inside. And this is done. And then we're gonna start our shorts. Mais quand la brise rapporte ton parfum à ma porte, je ne pense plus qu'à toi, ça fait beaucoup, mais c'est comme ça. Si les étoiles de minuit s'installent au-dessus de toi de Paris, c'est pour toi. ready to start our shorts. I will unveil the cute ensemble together. So I'm not going to show you completely finished um, baby doll yet, but I'm just unpinning the back. And what we're going to do is we're going to take um, a, a right back and a right front and we're going to put them together and sew side seam and the inseam to each other. So that's the start of this and I'm just going to serge it on my serger. Normally um, with the baby doll, it has like a bloomer that has elastic at the leg that makes it kind of tuck in, which I probably will do. I personally don't like that look on me as much, and this is for me. Um, I probably would prefer a short, but I think for the classic vintage look, the short is not as um, common. I, so I think I'm gonna just stick with the traditional look. So I'm gonna take a right front and a right back our under seam here and then our out and we're just going to search those together so not this curve just this little one down here and the side seam down here so we're going to do both of those really quickly now because these are a bloomer and not a short I cut them very short well you could even do which was very common in the depends on the era like the baby doll's been around a long time but in the 50s they had more of a bloomer and as you got into the late 60s and into the 70s it went more with just a matching underwear so i almost did that i almost made a matching underwear so you could do either one or both 
um, if you wanted to, if you had enough fabric. Uh, for me, what was going to be the determining factor is how much fabric I had. If I had enough, I wanted a bloomer. If I didn't have enough, I could definitely get a pair of underwear probably out of the scraps. So let's put this together real quick. So before I put the two pant legs together, I went ahead and put lace around the bottom. So now I have a lace edged short. And then when I put elastic in, you can see it'll gathered up really cute. Um, it also would be really pretty just to be left like this, but we're gonna have one right side out and we're going to flip the other one to the wrong side. And we're going to slide the one that is right side out into the one that is wrong side out lining them up at the side seam and the inseam. So here's my little inseam. I'm working with a very, very stretchy, soft um, knit, which I love. It's going to be wonderful to wear, but at the machine it can be a little stretchy, so I'm just being super careful not to stretch anything in the pinning or in the sewing. At the sewing machine I'm using my even feed foot which really helps with knits in general, but also with anything that wants to move or is super soft. So we're just pinning this together, and I'm gonna serge the whole U all the way around. So can you see, here's, there's our little U. I'm gonna serge around that U, and then we're ready for elastic in this, and we're done. So I've got my shorts together, and um, I went ahead and serged my top edge where the waistband's going to go and we're just going to fold that down to make a casing for my elastic. Um, so I'm just going to fold it down to do the elastic casing. We've done that lots of times if you've seen any of my other videos on making um, pants um, with an elastic waist. We've done it quite a few times. So we're going to fold down, top stitch it, leave a little hole to fish my elastic through. You want to cut your elastic a little bit smaller than your actual waist size. So if you're a 30 inch waist, you might cut your elastic at about a 28. You wanna overlap it when you're done so that it stays nice and sturdy and then sew shut your casing. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do for top stitching on elastic. I'm gonna put elastic on the wrong side for the legs and zigzag it to gather up the legs. So I'm gonna show you a little trick for that after I get this waistband done. So here's my elastic trick. I've cut my elastic to go on the inside of my leg and of course it's less than the circumference of the shorts leg and I've tacked it down at the underseam. So this is my inseam and I've actually tacked it down. There's a little tack there and I've set my sewing machine for a wide zigzag. Now the zigzag has to go just on each side of my elastic. So you want to choose your elastic. Often I use an eighth of an inch. This is a quarter but this machine can swing wider than a quarter of an inch. So let me just show you. So see how it's swinging? and it's going right past it. And then you stretch your elastic as you go. So once it's tacked, and I've actually marked where my um, halfway point is so that it doesn't pull out. And you wanna hold on behind. You don't have to pull it from behind, you're just stabilizing it. And then we just let it sew. So now that I've got it started, I can grab back here at my seam So this is how it looks when it's stitched. Just, to, just so you can see a little better, that's how it looks on the inside. And that's how it looks on the outside. And so when it's on, it's gonna have a little, um, the elastic will gather up on the thigh, but you're gonna see a little bit of the, of the actual fabric and then the lace below it. Well, here it is. It was a one, this was a one-day project. I started this this morning about 10 o'clock, and it's 2.30 now, and I've made both pieces and ate lunch in there, and that's cutting out, sewing the whole shebang for this pretty little top, and there's the matching bloomers. You could easily just do shorts if you wanted to. Any shorts pattern would work. I just chose one that was already pajama short um, because it was meant for the knit that I was working with and was easy to do. Um, and then added some lace at the bottom and a little bit of elastic to make more of a bloomer style. You could definitely just leave it as a short collection or even just do a short little leggy like this. It's just sort of a modern take on that traditional baby doll that you 
um, would see in the 40s and 50s and 60s and into the 70s. And here we are in 2020s, still making it. Classic. See you next week for another fun video.